Hi. Okay. Today I am making this, which is a new coffee soap. And this one is a blend of fresh brewed coffee from Nature's Garden and cardamom and clove essential oil. So I wanted to do one that was just a little different with a little hint of spice in there. So a nice spiced coffee. And uh, this is what we're making. So stay tuned, see how I made it. Um, it does thicken up really, really quickly in the process of making it. You'll see that happen. So on the top, I kind of just splodged the top on, but it still, it smells amazing. It actually smells like coffee and it actually smells like, oh, it's really good. I'm really, really liking this. Okay, let's get this out of the way. I have a black eye, so it's not what you're thinking. Matt hasn't beaten me up. I had a little fight with a chest of drawers the other night as I was putting some uh, washing away and I was putting washing into the wash basket, stood up and clumped my eye on the corner here and drew blood. So I was, um, I think you might be able to, uh, you can see it, look, look how bad it is. <laughs> so yes, everyone's like, oh, you've been in a fight. I'm just like, you know, automatically, you know that everybody's gonna think you're, uh, you've been beaten up by somebody. It's just uh, not the case. Thankfully, not the case, but um, yeah, somebody's gonna ask me, so I have to address that. So yeah, I clunked it on the corner of a chest of drawers, you know, very, like the very corner, so the tip of the top of the chest of drawers, and it was half 11 on Friday night. And I, you know, when you hit your head so hard that you're actually waiting to pass out, it was one of them, it was so painful. So I quickly sort of put my hand to my face, as you do, and then I felt a trickle of liquid and I thought, I'm bleeding. Now I'd have been okay had I not been bleeding, but I went into the bathroom, got a cold flannel, put it on, went downstairs to Matt, who's just, just about coming up to bed and just said, I've just clocked my face big time and it's bleeding. And he was like, let me see. Luckily Matt's a first aider. So he was like, let me see. So I was like, I think I need to sit down. So I went upstairs and he put on some butterfly stitches and a little round plaster. So where the actual hole is where I actually cut my face is there's no bruising it's just made its way right down here very odd but yeah painful anyway you're going to see that for the next few videos because I've got a few videos to film so I'm going to have a black eye in each one so there you go that's what happened anyway I will get on let's make this soap and you can see how it turned out and then we will cut it ta-ta okay going to pour my lye in Ignore the flakes, it's just, I've just mixed it up, so it's, uh, sometimes can be a little flaky. So I've gone off and made my blend, which is here, it looks like whiskey again. And it smells strong cardamom, I can really smell that, it's such a strong oil. Even though the main note in there is the coffee, but the cardamom is so strong, but I kind of wanted that. So I'm going to stick blend. So I will get this done to a light trace. Okay, first I'm going to pour off a bit just so I can mix that brown and get it back in there without getting clumps all inside. So if I mix it in a little bit of soap first, it just helps it disperse a bit better. And if I was to dump it in there, so I'm just going to pop that to the side and then a white is here. I don't want too much white, I've sort of figured out what I did want. Uh, hang on, I'm wrong way down. I only want about 800 mil. I can't see it. Two, four, six. A little bit more, a little smidge more. So, I have some cocoa and charcoal mixed together. So I want a nice dark chocolate colour for my base. So I'm going to take my spoon and slowly disperse that in and then dump it into my big pot there. 
much like you would with your micas in a bit of oil. Same technique, but I'm using a bit of the soap batter just so I can get it clump free. Nice deep dark, almost looks like an actual dark chocolate. do a coffee soap but I've been trying to create my idea of the perfect coffee soap and my idea of perfect coffee would be probably something flavoured with cardamom. I'm going to actually try it myself and make it. I always buy um, French press coffee, that's what I have here. So I have actually thought I could infuse some cardamom pods and clove before I drink my coffee so get that flavour in there because that's the sort of flavours that I really really like. I'm not one for flavoured syrups and things like that because I don't like all that fattening stuff. I like my coffee black but I do like a bit of flavour sometimes so I'm going to give it a whirl. So that's my idea of your perfect coffee. Right, stick blend that in. Pour in the majority now of my blend. And leave a smidge for the white, not too much though. Okay, so we're going to pour the base. can thicken up your soaps. Any spice oil like clove, cinnamon, they can have a tendency to thicken soap batter. Clove definitely. So I think that's probably the culprit of that. But we are fine. Okay. And since it's thickened we may as well boo, uh, boo. do a bit of texturing so that we get a little bit of interest underneath because I'm not going to be able to swirl anything into there which was kind of my plan but I'm not really too fussed I'm just going to do a bit of that like that and now I'm going to grab my white in that so I'm going to pop that to the side. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle my coffee into my white. Stir it in. Okay. Then I'm going to start Spooning it on. I'll probably pour that for a second into there. It's really heating up underneath. Okay. 
So if it's not bang on, it doesn't really matter. Then I have a spatula. I'm just gonna sort of do a bit of this to bring it over and get some texture. It's really thickened, but it's all right. Paste. Working with paste. <laughs> Tricky. Okay. Okay, so I've just done a little tidying up. But it's so thick that there's really not a lot I can do. So hope for the best tomorrow when we cut that. It will have some sort of half decent bars. Looks nice, but it's just not on course with the mould. But I think we probably will be okay. I've done my best anyway. So I sprinkle some coffee, which a lot of that will come off because it's so hot. But I think it kind of looks nice, even though it's really, really messy. When it's cut, it should actually have quite a nice look to it. So we shall see anyway. That's that. I will be back for the cut tomorrow. Ta-ta. Okay, ready then to cut this one. I'm not sure how the bars are going to look when they're cut because all of this is all over the place. But when they're all tidied up, I'm sure they'll be fine. like um like a chocolatey sort of a scent and that'll be the cardamom and clove coming through with that coffee scent it's almost like a coffee mocha it's really nice really nice okay so i'm gonna cut that away and get my log splitter Some of the coffee's coming off the top, as always happens. Let me show you. So the colour is super dark, which is what I wanted. So I'm thinking it might not have discoloured, actually. Should enough with the essential oils. But you see this side piece here. I'll sort of trim that off. And by the end, everything will look fine. So I will take pictures of the finished bar so you can see what they look like. When they're all ready. Yeah, 
yeah, I kind of like actually on this one that you've even got the gaps. I think it looks kind of nice. I only wanted really to bring the white sort of oh, halfway across the oh for goodness sake, halfway across the bar. But as you saw when I made it, it didn't quite happen because it thickened up so fast. And I'm guessing that would have been the clove and the water discount. So not the best combination for something you want to stay a bit more fluid. But as it happens, I actually like the way that this looks. There we go. Okay, so I'll cut a couple of those on the tank. And then cut into inch wide cuts. So my soaps turn out about five ounces, a little bit more before the cure, but I don't lose too much of the weight because of the water discount that I do, so it hasn't got to evaporate too much. So let's cut then. I just watched this video Matt sent to me, actually I just need to trim off the top, of a skateboarder called Lizzie Armanto, or Armanto, who slammed about six months ago, maybe a little bit longer now, on a mega ramp at Elliot Sloan's property. So if you like, you know, if you know you're skateboarding, you know that I'm into skateboarding, Matt's into skateboarding, but um, we watch it all the time. So he's just, um, the other week, we found out that Lizzie had broken her hip and it's the same injury as Matt had when he fell from the vert ramp. So Matt fell nine feet. I'm not sure, I can't remember how many feet it said she'd fallen, but she went over the gap of the mega ramp, hit something on the, on the ramp before the takeoff and then ended up falling straight through the gap onto her hip and broke her hip in the same, I think almost the same place as Matt. So he had actually messaged her on Instagram and she said, oh, there's this podcast coming out, so I can't talk too much about it yet. But um, yeah, he was like, shit, she's done like exactly the same thing. I was like, oh dear. So I think when he messaged her, she was quite grateful because there's not many skateboarders out there that have had this sort of injury. So um, she said, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll message you when the podcast is, uh, has come out and then they can have a little discussion so he can maybe help her with certain bits and pieces, although she's skateboarding again. So that's all good. But I've just watched the podcast and horrific, horrific, horrific. They do actually show the slam. Not that it's something you want to watch, but whew, it's sort of part of the, the podcast. So I've just spent the last hour watching that not very nice at all and it just brought back some horrible memories so there we go anyway there's the top of this look i think it looks mighty fine and there we go inside that's quite nice so i've got like a crooked line without even trying <laughs> so that's good so yeah it brought back some of the uh, traumatic memories of matt having done what he did and the road to recovery at home what we had to go through <sighs> trying to run this business and looking after Matt at home who had to live in our living room she had to do exactly the same thing because we couldn't get a uh, couldn't get him up the stairs in our house and so he had to have an, a bed bought so that he could sleep and sort of basically live in the living room it was horrific and yeah they're watching that's just brought back some nasty nasty memories it was so so hard it's one of the hardest things that as a couple we've actually gone through together and um, there were times when it was so hard I didn't know if we'd actually make it through together because it was too it was so traumatic it was just horrible and he was stressed and I was stressed and just the two of us together being stressed was just not not a great combination so yeah I wouldn't wish that my worst enemy but uh, that was that so that's just occupied me for the last hour while I cut up some of the soaps I hadn't filmed and now, I'll just cut off two of these. Yeah, now I need to watch something a bit more uh, upbeat because it's just, I don't ever want to remember that again. 
I think I remember when Matt, sorry, when Matt phoned me and um, told me what he'd done. He actually didn't know at the time. He was lying on the floor of the ramp and he phoned me at about half past ten at night on a Friday night. And I'm thinking he's just going to tell me he's going to be a bit late home because there had been roadworks everywhere on the motorway up to Birmingham, which is where we did it. And um, I can remember the phone call and thinking, oh, he's going to be late, whatever, it's fine. And I'd had a glass of wine. And um, he phoned me and just said, oh, I'm lying on the bottom of the ramp. And I don't know what I've done, but I can't move. And I was like, oh, OK. Well, I was thinking maybe he's just sprained himself. I certainly wasn't thinking broken hip. But uh, it took, um, how many hours did he go? It was about four, four hours, I think, until the ambulance got to him. And he got into the hospital. They did the x-ray and he like kept messaging me all through the night saying, you're still awake. And I was like just in a panic and I couldn't go to see him because I'd had a drink, so I couldn't drive. So late at night on a Friday night, it, it, just, it was just horrendous. I was like, I'm still awake. And he just kept me updated. I just... I didn't really want to remember all this, but that was what happened. And um, then he'd had his x-ray, sent me a message again, just said broken hip. And at the time, I just thought, oh, it'll be fine, they'll fix it, you know, do whatever they need to do. But I did not have any idea about the time frame of recovery. I was thinking, oh, in a few weeks, he'll be fine. <laughs> and we booked a holiday to Cornwall, to our favourite place. And um, I was thinking, oh, it'd be fine. By the time we go on holiday, it'd be fine. And <laughs> little did I realise it was going to be about six months before he would even walk properly without crutches. And, I mean, I think that happened maybe a bit earlier than six months, but even so. Anyway, I wasn't going to ramble on like that with this video, but that's what I've just been watching. So there we go. Anyway, here is fresh brewed coffee with cardamom and clove which I think is pretty nice. So I'm going to finish cutting the rest and then I'll be back for the next video, which is going to be peppermint and lavender, another essential oil soap. So I'll see you for that one. Ta-ta.